I'm Chris Holman, uh, AARP Michigan State President. Great to be here again. Uh, you can see that I brought a lot of family members. Uh, welcome to the kickoff session of the 2018 AARP College, a unique and extraordinary two-day event intended to enrich your volunteer experience. And you will be really enriched after the talent show. I'm just, I'm just saying. A very special welcome to our uh, friends from AARP Indiana. This is the Sarah and Joe here, Joe Everett, Sarah Waddell, please stand and be recognized. Yeah. That's interesting because usually when I'm in public forum, uh, it's better if I'm not recognized. Also here with us today is a very special guest who has been an AARP leader in Michigan and at the national level, Eric Schneider, our national AARP president. State President here, as you all know, and he's the shoulders upon which this position has been elevated upon. We appreciate the great work you've done here and you're doing in Washington. He has a few words uh, for all of us this morning about what's happening on the banks of the Potomac, East Street, and elsewhere. So please, Eric, come to the podium. Well, as a famous person once said, I'll tell them all, tell you all I know, and it won't take long. <laughs> but I, I would like to, by the way, acknowledge some really fine Michigan hospitality. I got one of these goodie bags, and it had two bags of popcorn, one really large and one small. And taped to each one was a uh, DVD, I guess it is. And the one with the small popcorn that you're supposed to eat while you watch it is MSU basketball highlights. <laughs> the, the really big one was Michigan basketball highlights. So, so thank you for that. That is indeed food for thought. All right, enough, enough of my my uh, partisan. I'll go back to being neutral, nonpartisan. Um, we have the Lobby Day activities next week, um, and it's one of those things where you could look at the glass, at least for us, as being either half full or half empty. Uh, on the one hand, we had scored what I think are some significant legislative victories in Washington that will literally impact millions upon millions of Americans, and particularly those who are in the retirement years. Uh, as part of the tax package, it used to be long ago that if you spent more than $7,500 on medical expenses, you could take the overage as a tax deduction. Then Congress raised it to $10,000 you had to spend, and then they were threatening to take away the deduction entirely. Well, thanks to a lot of good work done by AERP and others, we not only saved that tax deduction, but we rolled it back to the $7,500 level, where if you spend more than $7,500, uh, you can take a deduction. And it lasts for about two years, and so obviously we're going to have to be in there fighting uh, to extend that if possible and prove it. So that's one of the victories. The other, I think, impacts millions upon millions of Americans who get Part D uh, drug coverage under Medicare. And this year, as in past years, there's been a donut hole. And I think it's where if you spent more than $3,750 on drugs, you didn't get coverage under Part D until you spent $5,000. So that um, gap there was covered entirely by you. Well, I am pleased to say 
we did get that gap eliminated starting next year. So you can imagine uh, the benefit to people who have these terribly high medical costs in any event, and at least that you know, donut hole is there. In the legislative scuffle, we got the uh, drug companies to step up for paying more of Part D coverage. I think that was a win. We extended some telehealth uh, program benefits under Medicare. Uh, and Congress did end up passing the RAISE Act, which is a requirement that, you know, there are many, many resources uh, that the federal government provides, but a lot of times you think they're in silos, they're not being coordinated. So Congress is required under the RAISE Act to really develop a coordinated long-term strategy for caregiving that hopefully will start to integrate these programs. And I just got back from Massachusetts, and you know, there's certainly other states that have made progress of breaking down the silos and really taking what they've got and making it work together better. And hopefully we can do that on the federal level. So those are things that AERP worked on and accomplished months. And once again, I stress, these are benefits that will reach millions of Americans in the case of tax deduction and the donor pool. Very clearly, the millions of Americans with the highest medical costs. On the other hand, uh, we do have a situation coming up uh, where we think uh, there is sort of a storm cloud rule. I mean, we did try to improve the long-term care situation with what we call the Credit for Caring Act, which would give uh, tax benefits to people with high cost of caring. Uh, that didn't, didn't get through. Uh, but the big one that I see, and I want to alert all of you to, is it is very, very clear that the tax, so-called reform legislation that was passed, will blow a huge hole in the budget. It will create a lot of red ink. Nobody's denying that. And then the budget that Congress passed, which did contain some improvements for us, for sure, will increase that projected budget, some say as much as an additional $300 billion per year. There is little or no doubt that once that red age starts to grow, many in Congress will call for Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid benefits to be reduced or the budgetary items to fund uh, certainly Medicare and Medicaid to be reduced as well. That's a fight that's coming up. Uh, and it may be one of the reasons that Mr. Ryan uh, chose not to run for office again, because he was a very vigorous proponent. And it must be said, I think he did not see a clear path to the reductions that he would have liked to achieve. On the negative side, we still have uh, Congress and the House of Representatives in particular, and the uh, budget committee talking about reductions to the so-called safety net programs. So I think we can anticipate that kind of fight, if not right before the election, my guess is right after. And as a final word, I would urge you to think about a rather new, maybe not for us, but a somewhat different approach to this problem, and it's simply this. When people in your state, the state level, uh, congressional representatives start talking about cutting programs to balance the budget or to bring it more in balance, I would urge you to think about the following type of response. Don't cut benefits. Let's start cutting costs. How about drug costs, which are literally the highest in the world. How about taking a look at a 10% cut in the cost of these programs, particularly Medicare, 
by adequately authorizing and funding fraud reduction and fraud investigation. Hopefully, <laughs> other funding and the authority is not sufficient. And finally, the United States spends more on administrative costs for these programs than any other country in the world. How about a war on red tape and not a war on low-income Americans? We need to come back at these critics and say U.S. health care costs are the highest in the world and truly a bipartisan effort in Congress could make a difference. That is simply a fact. That is not fiction. It's a fact. So let's not be on the defensive. Let's go on the offensive. Thank you very much. Harry, thank you so much. And I might also point out we get one of the lower returns on investment for those huge dollars spent, too. We don't have the best medical system in the world. Um, Eric, we'd like you to finish this popcorn story, however, and that was the, um, one kernel that you got with Rap and Sullivan, and that was to view the University of Michigan's football bowl game highlights. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thanks so much, Eric, Th seriously, for that, and, and also for all you do for us here in the state and, uh, and in D.C. with us here today, AARP College, is the uh, large state regional vice president for the nine states in the large region of AARP. June Lyle, June has also served as the state director of AARP Indiana, so she has many friends here. June would like to uh, share some of the thoughts about what's going on in our region, so please welcome June Lyle. I don't think I've ever been referred to as a dignitary before. I'm like a mistress. Uh, it is a real pleasure um, to be here amongst friends um, from the AARP Michigan staff and volunteer team, from the AARP Indiana staff and volunteer team, and also um, our friends and colleagues from the national office. I am always excited to talk about uh, the work of the large region, and as many of you may be aware, the large region is an interesting configuration. Although Indiana and Michigan happen to share a state border, by and large, the large region is not designed on the basis of geographic proximity. We go all the way from New Jersey, and we have Arizona, we have Georgia, and we have Washington State, and we have some awesome states uh, in the middle. Um, and so you may think, well, you know, we're kind of a motley crew, strange bedfellows, an interesting conglomeration of states, uh, choose your metaphor, but each of those states has between 2 and 4 million people age 50 plus, has large metropolitan areas and significant rural areas, and also has significant multicultural populations. And I'm not biased at all, but I happen to think it is a phenomenal grouping of states um, that is doing a tremendous amount to drive the work of AARP um, at the community level in those nine states. Yes. And I'd like to give a special tip of the hat to Paula Cunningham, state director here in Michigan, and her volunteer partner, Chris
Two of those wins came from Indiana, and one of those wins came from Michigan. In our, in our region in 2017, we had six communities that joined the AARP network of age friendly cities. And again, Indiana and Michigan were each represented in that total number. The states in our region had a total social media engagement rate of nearly 22%. And that is a wonky number, but basically what it means is that our states are doing a great job of tapping into the power of social media to be communicating with our members and the general public and sharing the work that we're doing in communities and on advocacy. And finally, the states in our region drove our members and activists to take over 83,000 actions in advocacy to influence their elected officials. That's a tremendous amount of public citizen power so that is an impressive set of accomplishments, and really it's just the tip of the iceberg, as many of you know, in terms of the work that was done in 2017, but I think it gives a little bit of a flavor. But we are AARP, and 2017, although it was an amazing year, is already so yesterday, and we are already so focused on the work that we are doing and moving forward on. And I want to give you just a little bit of a hint of what to look for, I think, in 2018 in terms of the work of a large region. First, volunteer-led teams. When I first came to AARP 15 years ago, we always loved, respected, valued, and counted on our volunteers. But there was a more of a philosophy then that staff were more at the head and the volunteers were more the hands and the feet doing the execution. Staff were more responsible for strategy and volunteers were more responsible for execution. Boy, has that changed. Yeah. Right? Uh, I think we have realized that particularly as we have worked to do more and more in communities, the importance of having teams of volunteers in those communities that are on the ground doing the work and that are led by volunteer leaders. They're helping us not only understand what issues we should tackle and take on in those communities, but how we should be showing up. We have made great progress in this regard, but I think there's more can and should be done, um, and I encourage each of us to focus on how we can do even better in building and supporting the volunteer-led teams in our key communities in 2018. Second area, local advocacy. Until a few years ago, AARP, we done a, did a ton at the capital, you know, at the, at the federal level on Capitol Hill. We did a lot in state legislatures, so we stayed way away from local advocacy. That is changing dramatically, too. We've really grown to understand that it is important for AARP to show up in local advocacy in ways that impact people's lives. In Indiana and other, other states, we've supported public transit initiatives that have made it easier for people to be able to get around and to age in place. Seattle, also in the large region, recently passed a major funding increase to fund services for senior citizens. And we're actually even starting to get involved in certain places in local elections. This is a really exciting and growing area to watch, and I encourage you to be keeping an eye out for local advocacy issues that might be something that AARP might want to get involved in um, in your state. And third and finally, an area to watch in 2018, I think, in the large region is multicultural engagement. I am really excited about the work that is already happening in this area that happened in 2017 and that is underway in 2018. We're building strong relationships in African American communities, in Hispanic Latino communities. Um, we are building strong relationships among Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders. And I need to mention we are also working with the Native American populations, with LGBTQ audiences, rural audiences, and veterans and military families. So we're really involved here not only in strictly what we would traditionally consider multicultural, but also what we call specialized audiences. Yeah. Especially because our country will actually be majority minority in about 20 years, and some states of the large region are going to get to majority minority a lot quicker than that. This is absolutely essential um, to the future of AARP and our relevance as an organization. So continue to watch how you can help turn that dial in the right way for AARP. And I know there are some opportunities to have conversations around multicultural engagement uh, over the next couple of days. So let me close by saying again what a pleasure it is to be here, this opportunity to come together and connect 
is really amazing and unparalleled, especially during National Volunteer Week. Uh, I encourage you all to take advantage of it. I know that the chance that you all will have to share and to learn will help Michigan and Indiana and the large region and AARP as a whole to be even stronger in 2018 than we were last year. Thank you so much. Well, you can see how light uh, June is on her feet. She's a marathoner, by the way. I just asked her if she ran this year in Boston because the weather was so inclement, but she ran last year, but not this year, which also demonstrates her really good judgment. Right? <laughs> Matter of fact, along those lines, when I first ran into Joe, uh, ever from Indiana, uh, he confided to me that there was a, a light dusting of snow in Indiana yesterday. And so I did my typical Michigan. No, this time of year? <laughs> so don't give me up on that one, right? Uh, we want to welcome this morning, and June, thank you so much for not only your remarks and your update, but what do you do for us in DC? Uh, we want to welcome this morning Paula Cunningham, who is uh, nearing the end of her third year as the state director of AARP of Michigan. She's the uh, one who kind of talked me into this, and I've been in her debt. In, uh, oftentimes in my life, uh, especially my professional life, but I am deeply in her debt for talking me into doing this gig. This is so rewarding and so wonderful to be with all of you. So, Paula, give us a little glimpse of uh, what has been happening in Michigan. Please welcome Paula. Thank you. Recognize these are our counterparts uh, with Chris Holman and others. I see the Bruce is there. I think I saw Shinlin. Um, thank you so much for being here as well. All right, Michigan you know, this is the uh, happy, by the way, happy National Volunteer Week. This is the National Volunteer Week. So thank you, volunteers, and I hope you're enjoying the week. You know, I often wonder. Uh, I think about our dear founder, Dr. Uh, Dr. Percy Andrews, many, many times. I often wonder, uh, what would she have said? There was any way for her to have known how much has been accomplished during the last 60 years. But she laid the foundation to support thousands of older adults. And every single day in our communities, you, we, lay a similar foundation. Whether it's financial security, social security, caregiving, age friendly communities, fraud watch, or any of the multitude of building blocks that are laid every single day, you have all helped us lay a foundation and create a path so that as people age, they can choose how they age, and they can also live their best life. We'd all agree that there are many different paths and journeys we can take to get us to the same destination. Some of you may remember Dorothy from the Wizard of Oz. They chose the path of the yellow brick road. <laughs> to travel the world, what she really wanted to do was to return home. That was her choice, and home was much more appreciated as a result of her journey and all the people that helped home be a better place. As we all work together, or as we all work separately in our own communities, we continue to share a common bond, a common goal that helps us to improve our lives, but helps to connect all of us to the circle of life. Our founder and our original AARP visionary, Dr. Ethel Percy Andrus, perhaps she never thought about a moment like this, where maybe 180 volunteers and staff in a room learning from each other for two days and figuring out ways to continuously, continuously improve and impact communities and to make home the place where we want it to be. Perhaps she never thought about home the way that we do. Last clip. friends and munchkins along the way, whether we create a whole new path or we create a whole new circle of friends and strengthen our life, please remember that in every single scenario, it takes working together and we can't get there without you. We are strong together and regardless of how far we come, and regardless of how far we go, we must always remember the journey and how this journey started with this chicken scoop and our dear founder, Dr. Ethel Percy Andrews. 
We need each of you to continue this journey with us. We cannot do this alone. There is so much that still needs to be done. And we want people to be able to have choices about their life, choices about their home, and choices about the journey that takes them there. Appreciate you. And let's make sure that this world is a better world than the world that we found when we first started. Thank you very much. Certainly not least this morning through the magic of technology, we're going to hear a message from AERP Executive Vice President Nancy Lamont. And we have to do this because I don't think Nancy's seen her own home in several years. We keep her so busy and on the road. She's the organization's Chief Advocacy and uh, Engagement Officer. She oversees AERP's community, state, and national affairs group with the responsibility for government affairs and legislative campaigns for AERP is widely seen as the most powerful advocacy organization in the country. This also, uh, she also manages public education, community engagement, volunteerism, and multicultural outreach and engagement for our AARP. And under her leadership, AARP has executed several successful large-scale advocacy campaigns. She also put together the book, Where We Live, and if you haven't broken the cover on that, you should. It's fascinating research and uh, really eye-opening. Nancy's going to join us via Skype today, and we'll uh, field questions from the audience following her remarks. So if you have a question for Nancy, please print it uh, on, a, on a card, and uh, we will collect those cards. Put it on your table, we'll collect those cards, and then I'll ask them on your behalf. So uh, Nancy McLeod, how are we doing? These, these are those moments where you gasp because technology is almost as obedient as our children. Advanced Act for Science Scope of Speakers. 
and more than 30 states have picked up funds to choose. Like the proposed legislation in Michigan that would find business and licensing requirements with other states to access to care. So we expect more in the next couple of months. State teams, including a lot of you, are also working hard to advance a host of other issues to AARP members, older adults, and their families. Things like making our roads safe for walkers and bikers, protecting older adults from age discrimination and financial exploitation, improving transparency for prescription drug pricing, expanding broadband access, and keeping utility rates open. Now at the federal level, we successfully protected a number of critical programs in the spending bill the President signed into law last month. This is likely to be the last major piece of legislation Congress will pass this year. And in addition to advocacy, we're working every day to engage AARP members and all the other older adults in events and experiences, and also equip them with information and tools that help them live their best lives. You're doing great work in Michigan and Indiana. I hear that Michigan's experience for higher program is really taking off. And congrats to Team Indiana on signing up the first community in the state for age-friendly community network. Looking at what we aim to accomplish this year and over the next three years as we advance AARP's new strategic plan, I see some challenges and a lot of opportunities. So first, in terms of challenges, first, needs of older Americans continue to grow, as do the threats to critical programs and services many rely on for financial and health security. For example, we know that rising budget deficits will likely lead to calls for cuts to Medicare and Medicaid and other important programs serving older Americans. Second, partisan divide is not limited to Capitol Hill. You know that. More state legislatures are now controlled by one party, meaning there is less cooperation across the aisle and more party line votes. Third, there is an even more pressing need to arm AARP members and 50 plus with tools and information so they can live their best lives. From caregiving resources to fraud watch tips, we help older Americans navigate life challenges. And it's worth noting that starting this year, AARP is putting even greater emphasis on our fraud rule. The good news is that no organization is better positioned to overcome these challenges and fight for and equip our diverse constituency. Looking ahead, we have a very ambitious agenda. Our areas of focus for both advocacy and programs will be very familiar to all of you. Health security, financial resilience, and personal fulfillment. We're also doubling down on our commitment to engage locally. This year, we will move deeper in communities where we already have a presence, increasing the cadence of activity to really drive engagement, awareness, and AARP's relevance on the ground. All of you and your counterparts across the country play an important role in this local work. You are our arms and our legs on the ground, leading events and making sure that AARP has a presence in your communities. Your efforts are particularly important for our livable communities work, which as you know, is a strategic priority. This is an area that is critical to address the needs of an aging population, and in turn, to make the community stronger for residents of all ages. We do this through safe, affordable housing and transportation, good health for ourselves, our loved ones, and our environment opportunities to learn, support our families, and enjoy our lives. Connections to our neighbors in government that is responsible to your needs. We will continue and strengthen our partnerships with residents, community leaders, and public officials of all stripes in close to 300 towns and cities nationwide. Much of this work is done through the AARP network of aid friendly communities that comprises more than 200 communities across the country, including five in Michigan and one in Indiana. We will also shine a spotlight on age-friendly efforts across the country, dig deeper into how ideas are being turned into action, and make it a little easier for community leaders to learn from each other, 
We're working on the third edition of our Where We Live book that will highlight more than 100 examples of ways communities are becoming more age friendly and harnessing the positive contributions of their older residents. And yes, I checked. Your incredible work in Flint is included as our transportation project in Indianapolis. And there. We also to launch the second year of our Community Challenge Grant Program to help communities take action on short-term projects. Last year, AARP provided $785,000 to 91 winning projects, including signage on a local walking trail in Kokomo, Indiana, bicycle stands in Bessemer, Michigan, and transforming an alley into a new community gathering space in Wayne, Michigan. This year, our goal is to distribute $1 million. The grant application process is underway and open until May 16. So if you know of a nonprofit or a local government that can use some funding for a quick action project, please talk to Paula or Sarah about getting them an application. Finally, we're going to be doing a big voter education and engagement push this year. It's a year divisible by the Upcoming congressional and gubernatorial elections are a tremendous opportunity to highlight the power of the older voters at the polls, as well as to elevate the issues that are important to them. If historic trends hold, we know that older voters will be an important and perhaps decisive segment of the 2018 electorate. Since 2006, voters age 45 and up have made up more than 60% of the electorate in midterm elections, reaching nearly 70% in 2014. As always, our approach will be strictly nonpartisan. We will focus on educating our members about key issues, making sure they turn out in force, and influencing the public narrative about older voters in this year's election. Our campaign team is putting the finishing touches on our plans, and you'll see them soon. There'll be more to come from them in short order. So that's a high level look at what we're going to do this year. And now I want to talk just a little bit about the overarching framework for how we do what we do. This will sound familiar to many of you who were on the volunteer teletown call last week. It's our transition from national to nationwide. We need to approach our work as a collective network and a collaborative network of state-based teams and national office staff that shares information and leverages expertise up, down, and across the organization. Instead of operating solely as a top-down nation, promoting a one-size-fits-all national agenda, the kind that usually ends up being one-size-fits-none. The goal is to deliver advocacy and programs that better reflect the needs and concerns of local audiences. So the 50 plus feel a more authentic connection to AARP as a local organization, and policymakers see us as their voice of their constituents. Local relevance is critical to the future of AARP. Remember that, uh, that we have a full afternoon of breakout education and outreach uh, sessions covering a wide variety of topics issues and uh, missions, and you should have a schedule of your uh, your workshops with you. And then tonight, please join us for our Shining Star Gala. Uh, there will be a uh, there will be a strolling dinner. I'm laughing because I'm thinking about the talent show. Sorry. Oh, that's a good point. It is a variety show. It's definitely not a talent show. There will be a uh, strolling dinner followed by our Volunteer Excellence Awards and a volunteer-led variety show. The doors open at 545 and there will be community group photos in the back of the dining room with Grand Rapids at 545, Lansing at 6, and Jackson at 615, and all the accomplishments that we had as a team. Let's give a round of applause to uh, Andrea Palmer. Stand up, Andrea. I'm going to have you do the video at my funeral. I'm in the now. We can't wait. Also, I'm going to have... <laughs> See what happens when you bring family. <laughs> also, could we have members of our uh, national staff please stand to be recognized? Uh, PJ 
Jeffries, as I call your name and stay standing, please. Heather Hepner, uh, Carmen Milan, Megan uh, Hookey, Natalie Shortle, uh, Gigi Bessix, uh, Kalam Bataya, uh, and uh, James Brooks, as well as Susan Lutz. And let's give them a call of amount of work they do in D.C., which as you know is not the most easy environment to work in these days. Um, well, we will present Shining Star Awards tonight for five outstanding volunteers. Please know that we, uh, we highly value each and every one of you. You know, we're all shining stars to an extent. You have to pick a few, but we all shine. You mean so much to ARP and our social mission. You represent AARP to help advance our advocacy agenda during the visits to offices of our congressional delegation, state legislators. Many of you host workshops that help people avoid fraud, scams, plan for retirement, disrupt aging, and as our new TV ad says, take on today. Did you get yours? Your staff registration. Uh, tables, oh, you staff register, I'm sorry, you staff registration tables at our, our many events and at the Detroit Information Center as well. You help older adults with their tax returns and to drive safely and learn the new rules of the road. You're the lifeblood of AARP. Thanks for all you do Very in the nice. trenches. Nice. The real work of AARP gets done. Give yourselves a big round of applause. program is uh, Megan Hookey. She's Vice President of Volunteerism and Service uh, to deliver a message on what volunteers truly mean to AARP, its work and its mission. Please welcome Megan. Excuse my back. So I just got the heads up that you all are warmed up. Uh, <laughs> Thank you so much. You know, one of the things that I love about being with AARP volunteers and looking at the, the video clips and pictures from Indiana and, and Michigan is how well you all rock the red. Uh, that is fabulous. But of course, tonight we get to rock our poodle skirts and our leather jackets and our fedoras and our bow ties and all the wonderful things that make AARP fun. And it is clear that AARP could not do its work without our volunteers. So during National Volunteer Week, I am delighted to especially take this time to say thank you so much for the fact that you choose to share your precious time with AARP. I was thinking about this set of remarks, and you know, I guess I have to put on my little cat uh, glasses here. <laughs> Kathy knows I can't see a thing with it. Um, one of the things that I really value is the fact that somehow we find one another. And amazing thing in today's world with so much going on that you and we as staff and volunteers and sometimes you can't tell the difference in who's who which is the best sign that I like we're finding that we're finally finding one another and that's something that really harkens back to our founding days with Dr. Andrew she found a teacher in need and she responded and you similarly are helping to make sure that we're doing work that oftentimes we don't see all of those who would touch us we don't know who benefits from all of our work, but we do know that because of your work, we are able to look out across our communities. We're able to speak out in our communities. We're able to reach out. And that's because of you. That's because, again, you have chosen to give your time and talents and that breadth of life experience and expertise that makes us stronger. Our action depends on our ability to have that ability to connect with people. And we don't have capacity without our volunteers. You bring those skills, that energy, passion that lights my fire every day, but also excites others. When people start talking to you, I'm sure they say, I didn't know that AARP did that. You're doing what? Wow, you look like you're having an awful lot of fun. And that's really a nice part of AARP. It's what you help bring that spark that we need every day. You also bring what's known as social capital. That's that Rolodex of contacts, that set of friends, the people that you know, the connections that you have. 
so that we can be even more effective as we reach out to communities across the country. You're authentic, you're creative, you're credible, and you're a lot of fun to be around. Thank you very much, and let's keep on our work and see so that as we move forward in 2018 and think back to 1958 when Dr. Andrus founded AARP, and she was looking to you. She was looking for that army of useful citizens, those people who are willing to step up and work with AARP on these immense needs in our country, but also the tremendous opportunity that working with you, we can continue to address. So thank you very much. Have a fun evening. Thank you, Megan, for that uh, inspiring message. Uh, we've arrived at the uh, award presentation part of the show, and we're proud to tell you uh, that all of these awards were handcrafted by a small business owner in Lansing, Michigan, who is also an AARP member. So we got some of the costs back in due. <laughs> now, before we present the Shining Star Awards, we will present the 2018 Stephen J. Gould's Award for Social Change. And uh, will AARP National President Eric Snydwin please come up to the podium to uh, present this honor? Let's welcome Eric. Steve Goles was a close friend of mine. He passed away in 2011 after serving a dozen years as state director of AARP Michigan. He led the organization with his own brand of deep commitment and passion that will also be remembered by those who knew Steve and worked alongside of him. It was Steve's vision, leadership, and dedication that moved AARP Michigan and the lives of older Michiganders forward in unique and substantial ways. This award is presented in honor and remembrance of this champion for older adults. This year's winner of the Stephen J. Gould's Award for Social Change is Elder Law of Michigan. Elder Law is an advocate for Elder Law is an advocate for and a counselor to older Michiganders in so many ways. Their 24 member staff and volunteers provide legal counseling, professional services, and pension and benefits access counseling to countless number of Michigan's older adults. They have a legal hotline for Michigan seniors, a housing rights center, and they're connected to a National Center for Elder Rights Advocacy. Each year, they recover millions of dollars in lost pension benefits and help to prevent home foreclosures. Will Keith Morris, President and CEO of Elder Law of Michigan, please come up front to accept the 2018 Stephen J. Bull Honor, and I'd like to accept it on behalf of our staff because without the hardworking folks that come to work every day at Elder Law of Michigan, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. And I feel like we're only doing just a small piece of what needs to be done. And it's with the help of folks like you that we're able to reach out and help more people. 
Some of you may be volunteers in our Mind Cafe sites in the community. Some of you have volunteered on our hotline over the years. You know, back when I first started the Elder Law, we, and we got our new offices. We had, a, we had something called a reverse boiler room um, where we, we had volunteer seniors come in and call other seniors and warn them about fraud. And that was my first you know, real exposure to AARP. And it's been a wonderful partnership ever since. And so on behalf of my staff and the people that we help every year, thank you so much for this honor. And I wish I could honor you for all the work that you're doing every day, too. Thank you. of course the centerpiece of the program, the main event of the evening presentation of the Shining Star Awards. So uh, Eric, if you would please rejoin me on the stage here, and uh, also will AARP Michigan State Director Paula Cunningham, Regional Vice President June Lyle, and AARP Vice President of Volunteerism Megan uh, Hookie, please join me on the stage to present Shining Star Awards. And come on, present the first award, Kim Bishop. Woo! Kim, would you join me on the stage? I, 
anybody who knows me, I can't, I can't see a thing uh, unless I have my glasses. I would like to ask William Harris to come up on stage. And, and as William's coming up here, I'm going to tell you a couple things. When I saw William the first time after he found out he had won the award, first he said, someone's going to die. <laughs> Meaning those who nominated him, I think. I don't think me that he was saying that to. Uh, the other thing he said is that I don't deserve this. And I said, why would you think you don't deserve this? And he said, tell him. I have too much fun doing it. <laughs> is one of the outstanding volunteers on the Lansing Volunteer Team. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> he is an excellent representative of AARP and a very valued member of our team. Although he doesn't like to be in the limelight, William is usually the first to volunteer to do anything. He's also the first to arrive before I get there. <laughs> And he's the last to leave, always insisting, if it's me, and I'm sure anybody else who's leading the event, to walk him out to the car, carry everything, even if I don't have anything in my hands, um, and make sure that everything is wrapped up tidy. He, um, William does many, many of our events. And he does all this also being a caregiver. The nominator said of William, he's warm and engaging, greeting everyone with a smile as people stop by our booths. And if he says he's going to do something, he's always, he'll, he'll do it. He always follows through. Within a short time, it was apparent that AARP had a very terrific, committed volunteer. I can't uh, say that I, I can't, can't disagree at all. William, we love you. We love working with you. You're fabulous. And everybody in Lansing that I work with is super. That's, it's the most fun thing I've ever done in my life. And I just enjoy being with the people that I work with. Thank you. stage now to introduce the Shining Star Award winner from Grand Rapids. service projects in Grand Rapids with Meals on Wheels and the Kids Food Basket to bring volunteers together for community service projects outside of AARP. She onboards and trains new volunteers, tables events. She's part of the core administrative volunteer lead team, and she helped plan tonight's amazing event. <laughs> Joy, did I miss anything? <laughs> I don't think that I've ever heard her say no to any opportunity. And honestly, she says yes to more and more things. She is truly like my yes woman. She just loves to be involved, and it's been an absolute joy getting to know Joy. And uh, this is what some of the nominees had to say about Joy. One nominator said that she's not just a volunteer, but a volunteer of the highest caliber. 
Another said, Joy is a tireless volunteer for all areas of AARP service to her community. Joy, it's been a pleasure working with you, and I know all of the volunteers in Grand Rapids would say the same thing. So thank you for all that you do to make Grand Rapids an even grander place to live. So Joy, come on up and receive your award. Supporting actor 
Gloria Graham. In 1953, the Music Award went to Demetria Tompkins. In 1954, the Best Actor Award went to William Holden. In 1956, the Director Award went to Delbert Mann. And what they all said was thank you, thank you very much, and I appreciate it. And I want to give those same words to you. Thank you very much. But in keeping with something that I remember of the 1950s, that was uh, was the Three Musketeers, Annette Funicello. <laughs> and they always ended every program with the song Mickey Mouse. And they used to say, M I C K E Y. and look at where we are now, a national organization. Award of the night, I'm so honored to introduce a true volunteer leader, yes. Catherine Martin. <laughs> Catherine is active in so many areas, including advocacy, which is why I was gonna have to arm wrestle Lisa. What? Community outreach, and she's a member and leader of AARP Southfield Chapter. She's an excellent presenter. She stays up to date on AARP's state and national legislative issues and priorities and takes the information back to chapter members. And she is here dressed beautifully, even with a little apparatus. <laughs> She has helped, she helped us with our door-to-door -door campaign in Flint, and you saw her on the video. And she's led the Southfield chapter's presence at the senior day at the Detroit Zoo. One nominator said of Catherine, she's an effective leader who serves AARP in a dual role. She, she serves by showing her love, her dedication, and hard work, and she is effective because she knows the community so well. Please, everyone. Let's give Catherine Martin love as she joins us to accept a well-deserved Shining Star Award.